gonna be sharing a few of my favorite ways to make your cheap wines taste slightly better. Obviously this is gonna be a little bit subjective because everyone's idea of a cheap wine is different. This is for like your Yellowtails and your Sutter Homes and your Ten Sisters, like Charles Shaw. That's like $30 at Trader Joe's. So it's more so for those wines that are like eight to $10, that's considered cheap to me. That's my idea of something cheap. This isn't by any means a wine etiquette video because there are a lot of things that are kind of different from <laughs> etiquette. I also just want to throw out there that just because a wine is cheap doesn't mean that it's like a bad wine. Just like a really expensive wine isn't always a great wine. I, I love a good cheap wine. I love a wine. Period. So that being said, if you're interested in learning a couple of things um, or not learning anything at all, but just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so if you like this video or you find it helpful at all, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe so you can join my wine happy family. <laughs> So my first and favorite way to make your cheap wines taste a little better is just investing in a decanter. I feel like if you drink wine often enough, it's just a good thing to have. Definitely a small investment, but it's like one of those things that buys itself over and over and over again. Decanters and aerators are designed to hit your wine with oxygen. This is gonna bring out the flavors of the wine or as people say, the aroma or the bouquet of your wine. It's really gonna just bring out a better flavor in your wine. It's also gonna reduce a lot of that grittiness and that harshness that we sometimes taste in our wine. Another thing it does is it gets rid of the sediment, which is just that matter that sits at the bottom of your wine bottle. Um, it's just gonna help to like evenly distribute it throughout the wine, so it's enhancing the wine instead of tasting like, um, I don't know, bad. The price point for decanters usually starts around $35, and of course it will go up depending on how much you want to spend and what you're looking for in a decanter. There are so many different ones. I unfortunately can't link the one that I'm using down below because it was gifted, but I can assure you that there are a bunch on both Amazon and also Uncommon Goods has really cool ones. Another bonus for me with decanters is I just feel like they're so cool looking, like there's just a certain aesthetic going on. I always feel so cool when I have friends over and just like super adult like, like <laughs> here take something from my decanter. And it's just really easy, it's just always there, which is why I think if you drink wine often enough, it's just something that you might wanna consider. So if you're not quite sold on buying a decanter just yet, there is another solution for that, and it is called hyper decanting. So if you have a blender, then you already have a hyper decanter. This is just gonna do pretty much the same thing, except like rapidly. To measure how much wine I want to hyper decan, I just pour a little bit into my wine glass and then I hyper decant it by blending it for 30 seconds and then it gets really frothy, which is like kind of odd considering that it's wine, but it like looks really cool when the froth settles. Yeah, this is just like a second option if you don't want to invest in a decanter just yet and you want to give decanting a try. This is said to do the same thing and I thought it was pretty cool because like if you have a blender, it's already something that's in your household. I wouldn't exactly suggest going out and buying a blender just to decant something, but if you already have one, then I would definitely give this a try. My next tip is something that I actually recently discovered. It is the wand. It's this company that's based out of Texas and they designed these really cool wands. It's kind of designed to help you skip the side effects that pop up sometimes with wine. One thing that it's said to really do is get rid of the preservatives, and, or the sulfites rather, that are found in a lot of preservatives that a lot of people believe causes their hangovers the next morning. I don't know if it's a myth or not. Another reaction that people sometimes have to um, wine is almost like an allergic reaction and those are the histamines. It's just a chemical that your body produces your body's actually trying to help you. It's like, what is this toxin? So it kind of almost acts as an allergen, not quite, but the wand is actually said to help absorb both of those things. It's super easy, it actually comes with instruction. Um, even though it's like super easy, all you do is stir the wand for about 30 seconds, and then you just let it sit for another three minutes, and then you're all good to go. Definitely a cool thing to have. The only downside is that they're sold in packs of eight and 24, and apparently it's one filter per glass, which like, if you're like me, that's kind of like a night. So, um, Kind of a cool thing to have, but also not the most cost effective, but just an option. This is 
another easy tip and it's probably something that you already have in your house unless you're like me and had to actually go out to the grocery store to buy it for this video. That's just fruit, just popping fruit into your wine. It's just gonna add some sweetness to your wine, which is like especially great if you're drinking an actual sweet wine. Even if you're not, it's gonna get rid of some of the bitterness that sometimes <laughs> creeps up into our wine. You can use whatever fruit you want. This isn't quite sangria, obviously. It's not by any means a sangria recipe, but um, it's like, like sangria light. You can cut up as much or as little fruit as you want, whatever you have or whatever you want to go out and buy. So just pop it into your wine. The plus side to this is that it actually looks pretty nice as a garnish. If you're having people over, you can just pop the fruit into the glass and then it's just already there as a garnish. And then that way no one knows that you're trying to cover up, you know, one, I guess if they see the bottle then they might know. But um, it's just really nice and it's super easy and it actually looks nice. It looks like a little sangria e almost. My next tip is to add soda or like bubbles of some sort to your wine. So kind of like making a wine spritzer. It's just gonna tone down some of the tartness in your wine, which is actually gonna change the flavor. So it's not really enhancing it, but changing it. Here I'm actually making a Spanish cocktail and I'm pretty sure it's called the Calimoco or the Calimocho. I'm not totally sure. It's just equal part Coke and equal part wine. I was a little bit more heavy handed with the wine. It's supposed to be equal parts both, and then you just garnish it with a lemon, and it's actually pretty good. They call it the four man sangria, and I think that's like so fitting considering that I'm trying to turn a cheap wine into something a little bit better. <laughs> Another tip is to mull your wine. So mulling spices. I actually have mulling spices in my home all the time. Mine are from William Sonoma. They actually have a recipe on the back to follow to mull your wine. If you don't already have mulling spices in your house, there is a good chance that you do have some of the spices that a lot of common mulling spice recipes call for. I just let my wine simmer a little bit in a pot, but I just popped a tablespoon of mulling spices into my wine and I let that simmer for a little bit. They do suggest that you use a tea bag or like cheesecloth, but I didn't have either, so I just ended up using this cool filter mug situation that I got from Tivana. And I just poured it over a to-go cup instead of a mug. I don't know why I did that. Or you can let it chill and you can serve it chilled if you'd like. But definitely a good way to make over your wine. It tastes really good. And also mulling spices just make your home smell so good. I ended up just taking the excess and putting it into boiling water and just like letting it simmer so that my house just smells like mulling spices and goodness. Another easy tip is to chill your wine, which is so different, um, but so easy. Um, you can chill it obviously in the refrigerator overnight, but if this is something that you're doing kind of on the fly, you can even pop ice into your wine, which is so strange because it's like ice in your wine. But chilling your drink just kind of makes it more refreshing, just like with any other drink, soda or juice or water, whatever you're drinking. Sometimes it's nice to have it chill. My decanter actually has a hole in it that's pretty cool because it allows you to put ice in it, which is super nice times like this and also during the summer if I'm like ever outside drinking a white wine, it's just like right there. It's definitely something to test out. My last tip is to kind of know the region of the wine that you're purchasing. I wouldn't suggest to necessarily know where every single wine derives from and just like know all the wine regions, unless it's something that you are interested in, of course. But um, just knowing that like a Sal Blanc would come from New Zealand or that you would get a good Malbec from Argentina, it's probably gonna up your chances of getting a better tasting wine just because you are targeting the region. Definitely helpful and definitely more of a forethought versus something that you do after the fact. But it's just nice to kind of know and it's also pretty interesting. My last technical tip is just drink your wine fast. <laughs> Just getting through that first glass sometimes is like all you need. But I definitely think that wine is meant to be enjoyed. It is a social thing. A lot of people really like it. Some people like it more than others. My mom being one of them, she like really likes wine and really takes wine seriously. You don't have to know the history and the art behind wine to enjoy it. And you don't have to know all the steps or like the wine ceremony to enjoy a good wine. Also, the price tag on the wine really shouldn't be too big of a deal. I know that this whole video was about cheap wines, but I 
to like take pride in enjoying my cheap finds all the time. But I do think it is nice to kind of know that there are options to make your cheap wines taste a little bit better. So that is it for this video. Hopefully you found something in this video helpful. Maybe you learned something, maybe you were reminded of something, or maybe it was just maybe enjoyable. Um, if it was, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Okay, you have to go. You have to go. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Oh, and remember to drink responsibly.